Hello friends and welcome to bsptrainings.com. My name is Neeraj. Today I'm going to show you data structure using Python. And today example we learn how to apply bubble sort along with dry run. So these are beginner series for the people who are willing to learn data science. So before they learn data science, they should be comfortable and familiar with all the basic algorithm and practical implementation of it. So let's get started. So this is a program which I'm going to show you how to run and execute this program and what is an outcome. But before we run this program for bubble sort, let's understand the concept in Excel. So I'm going to write bubble sort as the name indicate bubble sort where you compare two numbers and swap them. Whichever number is greater appear towards the right. Let's see this practically for the sake of simplicity. Let's keep this number. I'm going to use this number. Uh, for sorting. So these are my number. I want to sort them using bubble sort technique. Right. I'll mark this number as yellow. The first we will execute in multiple pass in first pass. Let's see what is going to happen. In my case, the size of my array. Let me write over here the size of array which we need over here is four and index in Python start from zero. So this is index number zero, one, two and three. Right. This is size of my array. Then first pass. First we are going to compare first two number which I marked with a yellow color and whichever number is bigger. If 53 is bigger than 45. If condition is true, swap this number 53 with 45. So if this condition is true, 53 will be swapped with 45. And in every pass, the greatest number would be reached to the rightmost position. So this is an outcome of first step. Now the next step we are going to compare these next two number 53 with third. If this condition is true, is 53 is bigger than three, the condition continue to be same. 53 is bigger than 3, then swap 53 with 3. Right? So in next step, 53 will replace with 3. So here we would have 53 and you have 3 over here. Again, you are going to compare 53 and 32. And the condition is true. Therefore, 53 will appear to the extreme right. So you see after each pass, the, the biggest number appeared towards the right. This is the end of pass one. So how many times this in pass one it run four times, right? Let's execute the same thing in pass two. In pass second, we'll continue from the same point. Once again, we compare 45 with three and whichever is greater. If 45 is greater than three, they will swap. Then swap 45 with 3. So what will happen? 45 will appear over here. 3 will appear over here. Right. Next, you compare 45 with 32 and this continue to happen. So at the end of this whole process, you would have 45 over here and 32 over here. And you see, you got a second highest number at second right position. In every pass, you get one number. So you got how many passes? First pass, second pass. And the same thing happened in third pass. The third highest number will appear, third position. Now you execute, continue running from the same point. You compare these two numbers. And if this condition is true, 32 will replace with 3, but in this condition, is, this is false, right? 32 is greater than 3, right? So swap is not required. So after at the end of this process, the third highest number will move toward the third position. So number of passes equals to number of time the error were minus 1. So the total number of passes would be 
size of array minus one, right? This is going to execute in three paths. So you can have four, five, 10, 20, as many number as you want, the logic remains same. So we would be writing nested for loop. The outer for loop will represent number of passes and inner for loop will run how many times it will run. So you see in first pass, it run four times, in second pass, it run three times, in third pass, it run only two times, right? It will only compare these two numbers and swap will take place if the condition is true, okay? Now let's write the logic for the same. So I'm using Python 3.7 in this example, and I'll create a new file, and we'll do a rerun, okay? So let me start writing. We create a new function called bubble sort. I name it as bubble sort. And I pass an argument as an array called end list. And uh, we wanted the sort to be taken place by using nested for loop. As you see, the number of passes in each pass, it will swap n minus one time. So I apply for loop for, I use a variable called counter and counter would work. We would use a range function. How many times you want a counter should work? My array name, array size, minus one. So I use a len function, which is length of an array, minus one, isn't it? So this become number of passes. Because I want it to run till zero time and the loop will work in the reverse order. Therefore, I use minus one as an argument. So this is going to work as number of passes in this example. And then I write in our next for loop, which will run within this passes, number of time the member will swap within each pass. So I write for, by this time I use another variable called i, and it will run as many times as counter. So I use a range function, I can apply counter. Then followed by this, I'll compare and swap. If first value, which is my array and list, first value is greater than, 53 is greater than 45, i is zero for the first time, n plus i plus one, right? This is i is zero, i plus one is one. If this condition is true, swap them. In order to swap them, I use a temporary variable tam. And in temporary variable, I just use to swap the value. I value goes to tam. And then in and list, I value would replace with i plus one. And i plus one would have same value as tam. So swapping will take place. Once swapping is done, my algorithm is complete. I create an array named as end list. And you can have 10, 20, 30, as many member as you want. I create few member over here. I create five member for the sake of simplicity. And I call this function called bubble sort. bubble sort and pass this array as an argument. Because this is my function, I should pass it as argument. And once this is done, I like to print the output. Print my end list. This would be sorted output, right? Let's save this. So I save this as bubble sort example one, example one. And let's run it and test it. So if I have error message, we'll deal with the error. We have some error over here. Some extra spaces. Colon. Syntax error. There's an indentation issue. Let's run it. Again, there's an indentation issue. Let's run it. Again, we have indentation issue, right? So let this error come. 
that's not going to harm you. Okay, this is a square parenthesis and we close it. Again, we have an indentation issue over here. Let's run it. So this is your output. You see, the numbers got sorted out. Now, in order to understand this, let's see, create a dry run and see how it works. Okay. So in this example, these are the numbers, right? 18, 13, 17, 19, and 54. What I'll do it, I'll print this number and therefore it would be easy to understand. So I print counter, then I, and then my endless member, endless I and I plus one. Right, let's print them and see how it work, okay? And you can write a number over here in counter i and list i and and list plus one right to understand how it is going to work okay and these are my array members so i write my array member over here 18 before sorting 18 13 17 90 and 54 and you should also write the index number of them so let me write an index number uh, The index number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay. So let's run it, save it, and run it again. Okay. So these are your going to be your value. Okay. For the first time, the counter value would be the size of an array, which is 5 minus 1, 4 times. What is counter variable value? Counter equals to size of array which you use function over here called land of end list minus one so size of my array is five minus one four so it will work four times four okay the value would be i you see it will start from it run four times okay so starting from four the size of an array is 5 minus 1 is 4 to 0. So it will run 4 times. The value of i would be starting from 0. So first time it would be 0. Right. And then the 0 position at 0 position of an array you have 18. Right. Which you see over here. And the second position i plus 1 you have 13. Right. If condition is true, they'll swap. So after in first go, when you run it first time, if you display just end list, you see in every go it will sort at one step. Right. So if first condition is true, if the condition true, 13 will swap to 18 and this is going to happen in first pass. Right. Second time, I remain four. Sorry, counter remains four. Four. I become one, and this is one. It means first position you have got thirteen, because at the end of pass one, your output would be they'll swap. At the end of pass one, these two number would be swaps. So you have eighteen over here. You have thirteen over here. And then I would be one. It means this 18 will compare I plus one with this 17, right? So these two number would be compared. This two number and then this two number and so on. So as you see, how the condition would be true again and these two number would swap once again. So you have 17 over here, you have 18 over here, and so on. So this will continue to happen, 4, and it would be 2, and second position you have got 
18 and 90 would be compared and condition would be false. So in first go, your value of counter would be four, right? It'll run four times. The value of counter would be three. And again, it will run zero, one, two, and so on. So you can get exactly the same value if you want to print them. We can get the same number. You can display counter and I value only. So if I display counter and I value, this is what we get. And I should display this value over here. So right after the for loop ends, I display value of counter and I. So print. Before I declare, I use it over here. Therefore, I get an error message. Let me first display counter over here. When you display counter, this is what you find, right? For the first time, it run for four. Second time, it run for three. Next time, it run for one, right? And then you display once again over here counter. Make sure you don't do indentation error. So counter and I comma. So here's the output, right? First time it run for counter value would be four. And I value would be zero, one, two, three. Second time counter value would be three. And I value would be 0, 1, 2, and so on, right? And at the end of the day, the sorting will take place. So this is the final outcome. The number would be swap in every pass. The number of pass would be size of array minus one. So in first pass, four comparison will take place. In second pass, three comparison will take place. In third pass, two comparison will take place. So this is how bubble sort work. In a subsequent example, we see more advanced examples. Uh, so stay tuned with bisvtrainings.com. Thank you.